On 22nd of September, Hamilton released the new watch with a great press event at Zermatt, Switzerland. And I was there too. Today, we'll take a look at that new watch, the Kaki Field Expedition, and talk about one major weird fact which no one is really talking about. I was one of the lucky ones to be invited to that great event. As I said many times before on this channel, this is a small and new channel, but very promising because I have some nice connections with all the brands. Anyway, after the launch event at Zermatt, I managed to receive all three color samples. And let's jump into the review now. As of now, the collection has three color options, black, white, blue, and you have two size options to choose from, 37 or 41 millimeters. I have the white at 37 and blue and black at 41. Thickness is 11.5 mm and lock to lock is 44 and 48 mm. The case is fully brushed as you would expect from a military watch wipe design. If you are a soldier in the field, you never want to be seen by a blingy watch during combat. The lugs are shorter than the khaki field mechanical, so both sizes feel smaller than they are on the wrist. The signed crown is bold and easy to grip and operate. I must add that this is a screw down crown and with the help of this, the water resistance is now 100 meters, which is better than the khaki field mechanical's 50 meters value. Of course, the major difference is the compass bezel we see on this new watch. This is an expedition watch and uh, Hamilton's slogan for this new promotion campaign is step outside. So a bidirectional stainless steel compass bezel fits the team well in my opinion. Let me tell you quickly how to use a compass bezel. You simply rotate your arm to point the hour end to the sun and then turn the bezel to put the south direction in the exact middle of the hour end and 12 o'clock marker. Now you can read all the directions from your bezel. This is valid if you are in the northern hemisphere, which I am, and also you should consider if you are in a daylight saving time frame. As far as I see, one of the major critics about this watch is about this bezel being useless. Partially, I agree with that. I mean, if you know this trick, you can find your way without any bezels too. But with a bezel, it is much easier to make final adjustments and get a proper result. I still believe this is a good touch to the overall design story here. On the back, we have an open case back design where we can see the Hamilton H10 movement. This is an automatic movement with 8 hours of power reserve and 26,600 beats per hour. Hacking and hand winding is also possible. Basically, the same movement we see on Tissot PRX Powermatic 80 watts, but no plastic pass here and a new Acron hair spring as well. I honestly love this movement. They are always way more accurate than factory guaranteed accuracy values. We have a sapphire crystal at the front. This time, Hamilton added an AR coating, which we rarely see from the brand. Good job, and I believe they listen to their customers well. A clean military dial design with Arabic numbers and bold handset. The hour end is now an arrow shape, which I think is a nice touch considering you will use it along with the compass bezel to point the sun. The loom is still average, not the brightest nor the longest lasting, but it's still okay to me because the legibility of the dial itself is great. The lug width is 20mm for both case sizes and tapers down to 18mm at the clasp. Bracelet fitting to the case is fine and I really like the overall build quality of this piece. The clasp is also okay with some micro adjustment tools. Unfortunately, no quick extension here. Now we'll need to talk about the major problem with this collection. When I check the YouTube reviews about this watch, I see people comparing it with the previous mechanical one and also many people comparing it with Seiko Alpinist or even with Tudor watch. I myself was actually on the market for a white dial sports watch on a bracelet. There aren't many good options and Rolex Explorer 2 is a bit on the pricey side. As soon as I heard this expedition watch, I thought about the white dial one. I spoke with the German and UK guys at the launch event in Switzerland. They started by saying black is the way to go, but later on, they also started to say, yeah man, white is a killer watch too. I mean, there are a lot of good black dial watches, even from the Hamilton itself, but not many options if you want a reliable white daily beater sports watch. But when I decided to buy one for myself, I was shocked to hear that the bracelet is only an option with the black dials. Come on guys, it's the same case. Why didn't you give the buyers a chance to pick their bracelet? 
I really can't understand this. And I also asked this to the Hamilton CEO, Mr. Stoffer. Looks like they played their bets on the black one. But I think this will change soon. So the weird thing is, as of now, you can't go to your dealer and buy a white expedition on the bracelet. I really wonder what you're thinking about this issue. Since I can't see the white on the bracelet yet, I actually couldn't decide about the size option either. Uh, I mean, my wrist size is 19 centimeters. I currently only have the 37 one on the leather strap. What's your opinion about the size? It sounds small to my ticker wrist, but still looks good in my opinion. 41 white may also look larger. 37 white on a bracelet may look even better. But as I said, Hamilton didn't allow me to see it that way. What size would you pick if you were in my shoes? Anyway, I really like this watch. The overall quality is fine enough for me for a daily beater sports outdoor watch and I think Hamilton raised the expectations to a new level with this watch. This may easily be the flagship of the brand from now on. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You never know what will come next on this channel. Cheers guys, I see you very soon on the next one.